This is city state, the most expensive city in the world, located in the mouth of Pearl River Delta. With a population of Kentucky of 7.5 million and just north of South China Sea, acting as a major harbor between America and Asia, it has the seventh largest port with a GDP of $490 billion and 64 billionaires. Rival means Singapore, a one step solution for financial hub for Asia, business friendly policy, and separate currency with our Disneyland. Yes, this is Hong Kong for last 20 years. And this is Hong Kong since 2019. The people of Hong are out in the streets. Hundreds of thousands are demonstrating against a deeply unpopular bill. But this is about a whole lot more than a bill. It is about the status of the Hong Kong and the power China has over it. It is a fight to preserve the freedom people have here. This is an oversimplified history of Hong Kong from past to present to future and how Hong Kong became from this to that. This is Siachen's X-File. Hong Kong means fragmented harbor in Cantonese. In 1684, Hong Kong was a small fishing harbor under Xing Dynasty which ruled over China. In the year 1757, it became a Chinese trade post. The European demand for Chinese commodity like tea, silk was extremely high and the Chinese interest in European manufactured goods was extremely low. So the only way the Chinese goods can be purchased was using precious metals like silver or gold. But it reduced the British silver reserve to reduce the trade imbalance, the British sold large amount of opium to China and with that silver, they bought tea and silk from the Xing dynasty. China faced with a drug crisis, the Xing dynasty officials realizing this situation pursued ever more aggressive action to halt the opium trade, which in 1839 triggered the first opium war with the British. And the Xing dynasty surrendered early in war and ceded the island of Hong Kong to British in the Treaty of Nanking of 1842, thus making Hong Kong a British territory. Further tension between the British and Xing dynasty over the opium trade escalated into Second Opium War and the Xing dynasty were again defeated and forced to give up Kulung Peninsula, the Stonecutter Island in the Convention of Peking and the colony was further extended in 1898 where the British obtained a 99 year lease of the new territories. The harbour entrance is traditionally the gateway to South China. It is now a great manufacturing and shipping metropolis.
Nationalist China has now lost two-fifths of the country to the communists and close on two million men. The fighting now centers on the Great Plain before Nanking, whose fall is expected at any moment. As skilled Chinese migrants fled from the Chinese Civil War, and more refugees crossed the border when the Communist Party took control of the mainland China in 1949. Hong Kong became the first of the four Asian tiger economies to industrialize during 1950s. By the early 90s, Hong Kong had established itself as a global financial center and shipping hub. So many have died for Hong Kong. British, Canadian, Indian troops, local volunteers. War has held down to break barrier between the communities of Hong Kong. Hong Kong women have become independently wealthy and they dispense with their money very freely. Joyce Ma has brought the international style and fashion to Hong Kong women. The economic miracle has allowed Hong Kongers to prosper. And now it is 1979 and only 10 years left of the 1898 New Territory 99 year lease of Hong Kong, whose end is near. And as uncertain future looms over the people of Hong Kong, the stock market dropped dramatically. Hong Kong's confidence in the future was further shaken. Deng Xiaoping of China started a diplomatic negotiation with the British, which resulted in the 1984 Sino-British Joint Declaration, in which the United Kingdom has agreed to transfer the colonies in 1997, and China would guarantee Hong Kong's economy and political system for next 50 years after the transfer. But in this chaos, the voices of Hong Kongers were never heard. Oh, at that time we never thought that this, this would, uh, the British would give up a colony back to China. Never thought of it. It never occurred to us. Hong Kong was transferred to China on 1st July 1997. And the British rule of Hong Kong ended after 156 years. Now, Hong Kong people are to run Hong Kong. What does it mean? It was called one country, two system. It made Hong Kong a part of China, but it also said that Hong Kong would retain a high degree of autonomy, as well as democratic freedom like the right to vote, freedom of speech, freedom of the press, and freedom of assembly. And that made Hong Kong very different from mainland China which is a dictatorship. Its citizens there do not have the same freedoms. Its legal system is often used to arrest, punish and silence people who speak out against the state. But according to this agreement, one country, two system would not last forever. After Hong Kong was handed over to China, China respected their promise as Hong Kong was easily the most economical and productive city in China. In early 90s, right before the handover, this one city economy was 27% of the China's economy. And that's why China agreed to these terms to keep Hong Kong happy and economically free. The Hong Kong Shanghai Bank, a symbol of this prosperity, was founded back in the days of pirates and opium barons. Right next door is the Communist Bank of Red China. It earns $300 million in foreign exchange each year because Hong Kong is a free port used by all nations. Which was great for the communist regime as it allowed to trade with the outside world and Hong Kong served as the gateway to China for West. But things changed as China has its own economic explosive growth. These are the China's mega city. Their exponential growth which easily overshadowed Hong Kong as the economic powerhouse of China and Hong Kong from 27% of China's GDP went down to 3% today. So Hong Kong, the gateway to the world and economic powerhouse of China became less relevant. Hence, Beijing didn't have the same incentive to respect Hong Kong's autonomy. That's why China is not waiting for the deal to expire by 2047. It is acting now in 2020. 
and under the rule of leader Xi Jinping, the pro-democracy leaders have been arrested in Hong Kong and mysterious abduction of booksellers have created a threat to the free speech. Like many democracies, Hong Kong has a legislature with a democratically elected representatives. It is called the Legislative Council and it has 70 seats. Within this system, Hong Kong has many political parties, but they are mostly either pro-democracy or pro-China. In every election, Hong Kong's pro-democracy and anti-establishment parties have won the popular vote, but they occupy less than half of the seats in the Legislative Council. This is because when Hong Kongers vote, they only vote for this 40 out of 70 seats. The other 30 seats are chosen by various business communities of Hong Kong. For example, the one seat belongs to the finance industry, the one seat belongs to the medical industry, and one belongs to insurance industry, and so on. Many of these 30 seats are voted on by the corporations. And because big business has an incentive to be friendly with China, those seats are dominated by pro-China political parties. When Hong Kong was handed over to China in 1997, Hong Kong and China made an agreement that eventually all members of the council would be elected by the people. But that never happened. And ever since the handoff, the pro-China parties have controlled the Legislative Council despite having never owned more than 50% of the popular vote. The way it is structured, they want to make sure that the executive branch of the Hong Kong can have easy control over it and that would serve the Beijing very well indeed. Within this unique structure, the extradition bill has created new tensions and fueled anger among pro-democracy politicians and it has driven hundreds of thousands of Hong Kongers into the street. So what is extradition bill? It all started with a murder. A young couple went from their home in Hong Kong to Taiwan for a vacation. They stayed at hotel in Taipei for 9 days. But on 17 February, only one of them returned to the Hong Kong. There, one month later, he confessed to murdering his girlfriend who was pregnant at the time. And this was a problem because the Hong Kong authorities could not charge him for a murder because he did it in Taiwan. And they could not send him back to Taiwan to be charged because Hong Kong and Taiwan do not have any extradition agreement. So in 2019, Hong Kong's government proposed one. It would let them transfer suspects to Taiwan so they could be tried for their crimes. But at the same time, this bill would also allow the extradition to the mainland China, where there is no fair trial, there is no human punishment, and there is completely no separation of powers, and the conviction rate is 99.9%. And that's what sparked this protest. China and Hong Kong are two very different places with a very complex political relationship, and the extradition bill threatened to give China more power over Hong Kong. The growing Beijing's grief over Hong Kong and curbing of Hong Kongers' freedom of speech resulted into the Umbrella Movement. Now Hong Kongers are fighting against the extradition bill because the bill was widely seen as the next step in China's encroachment on Hong Kong's autonomy. The sheer size of the protest shows you just how much opposition there was to the bill. And this protest resulted in violent clash between Hong Kongers and police. The protest forced Hong Kong government to drop the bill and Beijing realized that Hong Kong is heading for a revolution and Beijing has to find out the solution. But things stopped. The spread of the Wuhan virus in China and its cover-up by the Chinese government led to the global pandemic since December 2019. And the world forgot Hong Kong. In this global pandemic, Beijing introduced a new security law for Hong Kong. As per Beijing, this law is the solution. This will end the Hong Kong's revolution forever. The new security law suspends freedom of speech and freedom of association. All the rights which were given under one country, two system. Now people in Hong Kong cannot pay respect to the Tiananmen Square massacre. This is from 2019 in Victoria Park, Hong Kong and this will be their last remembrance of Tiananmen Square Massacre. These candle holders stand as a symbol, a fight for their democracy against Chinese communism and the fight which already happened in Beijing once 
Hong Kong's identity is being erased and Hong Kongers find themselves engaged in that same fight. Now they are resisting a much more powerful China than before to preserve their identity and to preserve Hong Kong. Now world is watching Hong Kong. If you like watching this video please do not forget to subscribe and thank you all for watching till then goodbye this is Sergeant Expire